first of all, we're going to kick off today's really long day um, with an amazing industry insight. So an industry insight is um, a session that I put on regularly with that is supported by Ableton. And it's all about giving you, the viewers, an insight into all things industry. Without further ado, um, introduce the amazing Mel Uye Parker. Woo! So Mel, you are a musician based in London and you've been making music for nearly 20 years. As a vocalist, you worked with Ray and Christian Yeskin and most recently with Matthew Herbert. Um, you have also released all your productions under the, the name Majiri. Can you tell us a bit more about that? The name is my middle name. Um, yeah. So my dad's Nigerian. So my, my name is Mel uh, Majiri Uye Parker. So I just took the A away to make it a little bit more Modern. I absolutely love that. Um, and you know, it means, yeah. it's short for Majiraganu, which means let's praise the Lord. So uh, wow. that's some like hardcore oh, Christian wow. uh, middle name. Yeah. And so it's, uh, Majiri means let's praise. Wow. So your parents loved you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. they had high hopes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure you're like not letting them down at all. You're amazing. Um, which leads me on to the next part of you. So you're an experienced musical educator and you lecture at Berklee College of Music, Point Blank Music School and so much more. And you're currently leading on education for CDR, which is a community driven music platform uh, from the UK underground music scene. You're also an advisor for The Right Studio, which is a creative hub for people and organisations to engage on human rights issues, which is amazing. I love that. And it's definitely perfect for the issues of today. So you also make educational content um, and music that helps teachers and schools integrate technology into their classrooms. Oh my God, what else do you not do? And you're particularly interested in training and supporting young female and non-binary people to succeed in the music world. Absolute God. Oh, honestly, Mel. Let's praise. Yeah, Majiri. <laughs> You're someone that I've met recently and you have started teaching me how to use Ableton. And I remember when I first met you, you've just got such an amazing aura about you, the way you teach, the way, you know, what you stand for. It's just so inspirational. First of all, I would like to know from you, um, at what moment in your life did you decide to get into audio and why? Mm into audio so I guess there are like a different there, there are different sort of facets of my relationship with audio so like we could go let's let's see how far back we can go but I started off I started off singing and playing guitar um um in, in like in sixth form in the sixth form canteen yeah. um and then it was always something like a lot of people I just did for fun to learn something and I just became obsessed with learning songs and writing songs. And it wasn't really until I moved to Manchester. So I'm originally from Nottingham, moved to Manchester for uni or studying art and I dropped out. So I was uh, <laughs> bumming around a little bit. And, and I was playing more and more guitar and then I started doing open mics. And so it was like getting a little bit of momentum. And um, it was probably when I met um, a really good friend of mine, two, two good friends of mine that um, they were singers and they were a bit older than me and they, you know, had their kind of like days in the Manchester limelight music scene coming up with Grand Central and those uh, labels. And and that's just when I actually saw it as something that you can do. And um, so just, yeah, as a 20 year old, getting lots of encouragement and exposure to lots of the different sides of the music industry, it was then. And then... And so, yeah, and that has kind of mutated um, into what I do now, but that was its kind of humble beginnings, I guess. Yeah. Was there anyone that you could have looked up to um, that helped you on your journey to help you make those decisions, being a woman? Um, yeah, so the two friends were two, two women. They were actually seeing each other at the time. 
and um yeah they they it was definitely just like lots of nurture yeah as I said they were a little bit older like and so it was just a completely it was a really supportive um environment so one of them had this like amazing huge like gospel voice mm. and and a lot of these big voices were the voices that I've that I kind of that, that always made me feel like a little bit shitty about my voice because it was really low I not, feel much, not much range no like m- melismatic you know like none of those <laughs> yeah and, and 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 so my friend that had this uh, f- to me this amazing rich voice would then say you know your little puny thing that's that's what you do in your own way and like just hone that and you know concentrate on the tone and you know having sort of strength so you can hold these notes or whatever so it it helped me really like find myself in my voice and in my writing um you know I wish I had that support when I was growing up be you know being an artist because I I first became a a commercial artist when I was 18 and I've got a really soft husky voice and at the time it was like the 90s and there was like you know you know the 90s like you the guys were singing and they're like yeah you're not the lead singer are you and you know yeah I don't you know and it was just I had no it was when Aaliyah came onto the scene and I was like I can relate. There's hope. Mm-hmm. She's got a really soft voice and she's like out there. And it's like, that's the first time I started really believing um, that I could be an artist without having to be in a group or anything like that. I could like hold my own. Um, mm. So I think it's really important um, as, as young women to be able to have role models uh, when, when you're growing up. I mean, you're lucky that you had two amazing women that, that helped mm. you out um, and gave you that that belief in yourself at such a young age. You know, it's I think it's really important. What, what's interesting about that is when you hear um, many stories, not most, but a lot of people's stories of like singing. And I did sing when I was younger. I, w- I was in choirs, but I was never like a singer. Um, yeah. And and I guess I guess this is how it is at the moment that. That like music generally is just seen as a way like it's either a commodity or it, it's something sellable and actually people this is why lots of people are scared or intimidated about picking up Ableton or picking yeah. up an instrument because they're not okay with just being okay at their instrument and it's just about the enjoyment and and I think when you are compared to like the biggest singer in the world and you're comparing your talent to that, that it's a very specific talent that's really damaging to um, yeah. you know, a young ego, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, do, you, do you think it's got anything to do with, um, because me personally, I've got quite a strong personality and I was saying this earlier on a panel that, um, you know, I kind of knew what I wanted to do from a very young age, so that helped, but I think you know, for, for some people that don't really know and are, you know, open to all of the, the kind of subliminal messages in the music industry, like, you know, if you're a woman, you can't really be a producer or an engineer, you know, you're a singer, you know, even though no one's coming out and saying that, all of the, the messages and the images that we receive on a daily basis and the behaviour kind of points that way. Um, do you think, like, being having strong personality helps with that or do you think it doesn't really matter um it's just you know the same for most women in terms of like i guess um imposter syndrome and stuff yeah um it's it's amazing how many women i speak to that have imposter syndrome like you you just go you start to say imposter and they're like ah mm." like and 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 it you know, it surprises me. Well, not anymore, but, you know, it's still surprising that there's just so many that have this experience. So I think, and I think that's despite, like, your, your, um, your personality type. I yeah. think, I think having, like, a strong personality where you sort of can speak for yourself and stand up for yourself, I think that's good when you're, like, tackling outright discrimination. Um, and that's probably a strength in, in those situations. Um, and that's what I used to think 
you know, this whole thing was about, you know, if, if, some, if someone said, what's your experience in the music industry as a woman? When I was younger, I'd have said, it's fine. I've not had any problems. And then actually it's not that, it's, it's all of those things that you were talking about. It's, it's feeling like you need to be perfect at something before you go and produce it or even before you talk about it. So yeah. like to get your seat at the table, you have to do so much more than, um, or you, you think you have to do so much more than um, other people and other guys around you. So you've, um, yeah, I think that is always there and people that are feisty and people that are not so feisty, like have that, have that issue. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I think it's to do with um, as well, because the conversation that I've been having around the campaign is there's two things. Is it a society issue? Um, or is it a behavior, a male behavioral issue? And personally, I think it's both. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we should blame men because of the way society has over generations um, put this thing in all of us that you know men should be a certain way and women should be a certain way. And I think you, you pair that with the fact that over years and years, no one's really said anything to change it or disrupt the apple cart, so to speak. Um, and now we've found ourselves in this situation where, you know, we're struggling to get heard and we have to fight harder and we have to push. Um, and that basically brings me on to my next question. Has being a woman uh, given you any obstacles in your career to date? Um, <clears throat> I, think the, I think the obstacles that I've faced are are the internal ones, and I mean, and that's that's that, that's as big as any external yeah. factors. So yeah, I think it's just been my. Um, I think it, it it kind of bred some perfectionism or some like I you know I was just afraid to put myself out there. I was afraid to talk to like to collaborate to show my work and it wasn't really you know I've always been confident in my musical ability so it wasn't like I would question everything um, but it really wasn't until I started teaching and seeing all the different types of people coming through and actually realizing you know where I lay in the whole landscape that I actually got a really clear picture that was a bit more objective than just me. Like I'd be looking at like a muff wiggler forum <laughs> and like, you know, you've got some people that love the serial numbers of equipment and they love that. Yeah. They love to talk about the models and the serial numbers and how big the barcode is. And that is fine, each to their own. But I would see that and I'd be like, this isn't my world. Like, oh, I can't. So I'd just be like, like lurking in, in the chat rather than contributing because, um, it worried me and that you know might be largely a personality issue but um i think there's definitely something to said with how technology has been um you know how, how women are perceived to to um relate to technology yeah 100 um, and and i saw that when um when i started my youtube channel last year um and i started kind of doing walkthroughs and stuff um, and, and also when I started using Ableton, I was looking at tutorials and I was like, white man, white man, white man, white lady man with glasses, white lady man with glasses, black hip hop man talking about himself, black hip hop man talking about himself. You know, it was those are the only two differences that mm. there were really when it came to tutorials. You know, you either had the nerd, nerdy kind of style, which went into way too many words and things that you didn't really want to know about as a beginner or you had the style that was just all about like ego bragging and all of that and were talking about themselves so you didn't learn anything either and I'm like I need to do something about this because one there are no women and there are no women of color um, and so I re it really stood out for me um, especially it's not because there's anything wrong with either of those two people doing tutorials because I do have a bit of nerd in me and obviously I have black in me so I don't have Actually, I won't say that because that, I was going to say something that could be completely mis, misread and misunderstood. But my point is, um, there's a huge gap. And one of the conversations I was having earlier today is 
we have to make sure that we are visible for other women and younger women um, and people that identify as female um, or non-binary or trans, um, we need to be visible so that they can relate, you know, and they can feel that little bit more confidence that maybe I didn't have or whatever. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with, with the whole events of today, with the campaign and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, with, with people like yourself, like I, I, I identify with you, do you know what I mean? I look at you and I can identify. Um, we're not, we might not be, you know, the same person, but you look, like me you know mm. you're you're of color you've got freckles you know and it's it's like i'm like yay mm. believe it or and, not, and that's so powerful people that have freckles and it's yeah like and i think even like just um and, and you know i think it works on on multiple tiers right so you've got these people coming up and all the people tr you know trying to learn or on yeah. like on their learning mission um but then also as as like a professional in music, music ed education or um, or production, it's like, that is also really important to have this network, yeah. network of women, network, a diverse network of people that you can identify with you because it lifts you up and it lifts you up and it makes, it's, you know, I came to have this chat with you today and I didn't have the same feelings as I would have in another situation, in another situation where maybe I don't have people that I identify with. Like, I, I knew, you know, we there's a shared understanding. Yeah. I know Shana's not um, not visible at the moment, but there's the shared understanding that just gives you that confidence. It gives you that up, that up, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, you and so, come in like feeling calm almost. You mm. don't have that un, unnerving feeling of oh, what if, you there's know. There's nothing to yeah. prove, right? Yeah. There's, yeah yeah that, that is exactly it you don't feel like you have to prove yourself and you know I'm sure you and many other women that are watching this have been in many positions where we've had to prove ourselves or felt like we had to prove ourselves mm -hmm. and like you said mm -hmm. earlier it might be a subconscious thing but that that's been put there by behavior that has been created over years and years you know um and one of the things I said today is I'm going to stop as of today using the word female in front of producer and singer and engineer and, you know, course, songwriter. Yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm so mm -hmm. exhausted by it. And, you know, at a, at a point it was a thing, you know, that kind of made you stand out. But now we don't need to do that. So I'm encouraging everyone as well to stop using the word female in front of, you know, your job description. <laughs> mm. that's really funny I remember that there was um when I first started advertising um my myself as a as a like a one-to-one -one. so I worked in schools and colleges for a bit and then um before I became like a renegade trainer and like <laughs> I was like so the first like my first like testing ground was gumtree so I put my yeah. Um, put my name up and there was this question of like shall I shall I use Melissa so I appear as a woman or but and I don't want to I don't want to alienate the guys and like because you know when you're desperate you do desperate things don't you so it's like um let's you know let's stay and I'm, I'm male to everybody but I remember that was this the, a decision to to not play into any prejudices that like could be there and it's just like no I'm not going to do that again that's you know what I mean guys would never even think of that like one of the girls earlier today uh, on the panel uh, with the University of Winchester, so one of the young women was like, you know, um, asked a question and said, you know, if, if I want to apply for a job in the industry, should I use um, a picture of myself uh, being, you know, to show that I'm mixed race? And, and I was just like, whoa, 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 you know, and mm. I was like, how do you, what do you think you should be doing? And she was like, I don't think I need to do any of that. And I was like, exactly. I said, this is what, you need to understand, believe in yourself and know you don't have to do any of that. Like, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of, you know, putting she in front of everything, especially like when it comes to hashtags and, and stuff like, and female this, female that. And, but I think it's got to stop now, you know. Um, there are so many men, like since I've launched this campaign, some of the guys that are coming on today have been absolutely amazing. And like Steve, but, Bowman and um, um, Tony, Tony, uh, I've forgotten his name. God, why can't I remember his name? Um, 
Tony Mance, that's it. Um, so they have been so integral to like the campaign and what I'm trying to do. Like it, the, the reason this campaign, um, so sorry, the reason today even happened is because I was in a group and Steve Bowman said, where are the women? That led to me being a moderator in that group. Then me saying, we should do an International Women's Day takeover. The group and the guys were being like really open and you know, we're like, yes, 100% behind it. Steve mm -hmm. got a t-shirt, you know, and he's like, it, it shows there are white men in positions of power that want to help. They want to make a change. So that is, I just, cause I don't want it to all be kind of like, down down and you know negative you know I just want to say there are there are amazing things happening but we need to have the conversation and we need to keep having it uh, not just on International Women's Day do you know what I mean mm. it's a conversation that has to keep being had yeah I think one one of those things yeah because it's, it's very easy to to get on um be be a bit bashy with this and yeah. and I think there's it's not just the behaviors that are done to us right it's it's actually just taking a moment and being aware of um, all of these sort of subtle micro, micro not, they're not even microaggressions, but these these things that might be in place, like I might already go into a studio situation, for example, and not feel okay about speaking out first or, you know, you know, being very forward. So it's about just actually everyone being aware of the issues mm -hmm. and then maybe just taking a step back and just letting, giving somebody the opportunity to, to actually flourish. Um, and that's, that's what you do as a good person. If you're in a room and there's somebody that isn't talking much, you just, you, you, you shut up for a minute. Yeah. That, that's all. So it's just like, actually just take this, extrapolate it to half of the world and then we're good. Job done, problem solved. All right, just a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're done here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's just, I think it's yeah, it's it's having this awareness, and you know, people don't have to feel you know defensive or have any guilt about it. It's just, yeah. um, yeah, yeah I agree a hundred percent. And I think we're going to be touching more today on um, studio behaviours, uh, mm. men in, in the studio environments, and how how. Um, we can address them to make women feel more comfortable. Um, and once again, like I said, I can't, I don't think we can blame men because they've been used to it for so long. It's like, you know, if you've been doing something, it's a learned behavior. Mm. And, and unless we have these conversations and, and not in an aggressive way, like in an educational, coming from an open um, point of view, you know, it's, it's only then that we can actually you know educate someone and and then be like oh do you know what i didn't even really think of that i didn't know i was doing it and then they become aware and then they can just change and it doesn't need to be this kind of male bashing thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. we're in this together um and and that's the whole point um so my, my next question to you i guess is um do you have any kind of advice for anyone watching um on how they can benefit their career, how they can get into the field that they, they love, uh, whether it's engineering, production, you know, um, being a woman uh, from, your, from your perspective, mm. I guess. So I think like, I, I spend a lot of time like doing it on my own. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that was, that was because of for all of the reasons that I spoke about before about just, not feeling confident enough to put myself out there or to collaborate or um so so i would be just alone on, in my home studio with ableton well it wasn't it was logic then but just and and i f i found that that was such a stark contrast to where i was before and i was playing in bands i was jamming i was collaborating all of the time and then when i got into the more tech techie world that all collapsed yeah. um so my advice to to anyone and my advice to myself then is to just open up from straight f like straight away before before you start getting any 
before you start becoming precious about what you do and you know before any ego starts being attached to what you do um because it gets harder to then you know bear bear all especially when nobody's heard your stuff in three years <laughs> it's just like this is what i've been working on <laughs> like because you're not going to do that so yeah i think i think like collaboration is so important and and like everything good i do is with other people i think like you know what i i literally second everything you say like collaboration is one of my key words because even though i think everyone's capable of doing something on their own but something magical happens when you collaborate with another human being with mm -hmm. you know singing songwriting producing it's just you know that connection with someone else and and getting someone else's point of view you know in a creative space brilliant mm -hmm. yeah and also you've got someone to bounce off when it comes to being confident you know your confidence builds way quicker like i think doing it on your own can be so lonely um and also then the imposter syndrome kicks in you know you've got the voices in your head telling you mm -hmm. how rubbish you are and it's not good enough and all this whereas if you're sitting with someone they're like oh my god what are you doing that's wicked you know like, mm. yeah and i think i think you chase the the vibe a lot more when you're working with people i think when when it's you on your own it's really easy to start getting like start mixing and start getting into like getting under the hood and bit, like leaving the music behind and, and I did that for a long time like trying to get a, an amazing sound and I would I literally stop making music for like two years when yeah. I just I was really concentrated and I think maybe you need to do that maybe not stop making music but you need to spend that time but like when you're with somebody you it's it's actually about the musical ideas you're not going to sit and process a kick drum for an hour together yeah you might do and then talk about barcodes but <laughs> I, don't, I like i don't know i with there's just not that space to do that so it, then it becomes about this it becomes about that the beautiful moment of making music <laughs> random question don't hate me can you beatbox no, <laughs> no. Okay. oh wow you have to beatbox right i'll show you mine if you show me yours right you ready right, yeah yeah well I, i'm gonna give you 90s beatbox all right see but i'm gonna do it as well so this is me right, right? hang on <laughs> Have you got like a medic on standby? I literally feel like you're going to swallow your tongue. <laughs> such a great... Okay. I'm so bad at beatboxing. So bad. Right, you go. Why would you make me do this? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Give me your best beatbox. Come on. Okay, so we are... Okay, no context. No context. I used to do it in the playground. <laughs> Get wicked. <laughs> uh, what's it... <laughs> I'm going along with your beat. We're I'm, doing the tune. I'm, I'm serious. I'm a serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we used to. There was no. There was no technique like you. No. There's no like swallowing your larynx. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me so. I see. Any... <laughs> I have to do it that way. <laughs> wow. If you'd have told me last week that we were beatboxing, I'd have pro I'd probably be an expert beatboxer by now. Yeah. And like bags this big. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We'll practice. It's fine. We'll do it together. But that, that collaboration. Is... Boom. Okay. I think everyone can agree that something magical happened. Yeah. Right see, that's a number one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Okay. No, it's too late. We're going to go a bit technical now. So um, I'm going to ask you what your favourite plugin is and why. Mm. Oh, my God. I know what you're like. Again, right? why didn't you give me any notice? All right. Um, I was really <laughs> late to the... Uh, yeah, that's good. It's spontaneous. Yeah. Sweating. Um, <laughs> I was really late to the party but I love Sausage Fattler. I didn't get it for like ages. I don't even know what that is, tell me. It is this, um, it's like, um, I think it's like a limiter, a saturator, 
um, and it's got two knobs and it basically just makes things really fat. So it adds loads of extra harmonics um, and, and like just gets it really loud. And then you can, it's got a little bit of a tone knob that you can make things a bit brighter, a bit darker. But right. it's, uh, yeah, if you want like a really fat snare sound, Ooh. then put that on it and basses and everything in between. But you, I mean, let's, we can talk about your sound design stuff like in a minute, but yeah. So I saw you making a snare recently. I think was it snare you made literally out of a sample or something like every time I watch you, you just blow me. When it comes to sound design and creating instruments out of stuff, you're insane. Absolutely. Yeah. Last question. Do you have any tips on either reverb, compression, EQs or filters? You can choose which one uh, is your favorite. Filter. Yeah. My new favorite tip is to, and I'll actually, I, I can, I, I'll show a little bit of it when I do, uh, when I open up Ableton, but I, I really like getting like a long sustained sound and putting, getting an auto filter and just putting it all the way, just closing it completely. Yeah. And then using the side chain within that to open it up. Um, so I think you can get, it means that you can get some like really nice choppy, um, kind of stabby sounds um, yeah. out of something that might be a bit like yeah evolving I yeah. guess amazing but, have um, you got any particular filters that you like um I've just purchased the <laughs> Artoria um the mini the mini v oh it's the mini filter so it's like their Moog filter mm. that's really nice because it's got like a little step sequencer in it and you get um a little bit of just like sequence the modulation so it's a bit beaty uh, so yeah I love that um, a lot of the time I use the Ableton auto filter because it's it's great I really like um, the filter on the, the sound toys because it's got it's got a dry wet to it which yeah. is you can get because a, a, a lot of beginner producers a lot of producers when I hear their stuff when I'm if I'm marking off I'm going over like the tendency to like some some have the tendency to really swallow the sounds so yeah. it sounds really underwater and I'm just like oh just like open it up a little bit yeah. and so you could do that with a little bit of a dry and wet so you, you still got a little bit of the high end frequency um, yeah. information yeah. Um, yeah and also obviously using modulation with the frequency as well helps love yeah they use that a lot in r and like the whole club sounding yeah 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 everything do you know what I mean What are you going to teach me today? I've got one very quick thing to teach you. Oh. And then we can open it up and I can teach you more things. So I'm going to teach you Ableton, um, some Ableton. Um, but we're definitely going to um, just look. Cause I remember one of our first meetings and like you've got a great voice and a good ear. ear <laughs> but like you, you were like, look, I don't do theory. Don't talk, <laughs> don't talk to me about theory because I don't do it. <laughs> Very, you didn't you didn't, you're not quite like that but yeah um so i thought i'd show you the scale function in live 11 it's just it's just a it's a game changer so i'm going to get what have we got here uh oh this is my this is my new favorite ableton device maybe we'll do a bit of spectral time afterwards oh yes so i've got a little a sound I've actually just moved into the studio and I don't have my um, push set up. Um, it's not been set up for a while, but uh, so I'm, you can see I'm just playing with my keys. You can see my, my QWERTY's coming up here. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna actually, let's just go into the actual clip mode. So I'm gonna double click, make a clip. Um, and then we've got the good old piano roll down here. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Um, so generally what you, what you used to have to do when you, when you started, if you wanted to quantize into a scale yeah. um, in Ableton Live, you would go in, find scale, choose choose a scale and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I've been happy with that. But then this came, which, you know, when you just realize, you're like, how could I go back to that whole brick phone? <laughs> but you are fine when it was out. Like, the yeah. scale device was fine, but th this is better. Yeah. So... If you just head into this clip mode here, yeah, um, engage scale, and so then what it does, depending on the color of your clip, it will just highlight uh, the notes that are in that scale. So because we're in C major, it's 
we've got a blue oh, highlight oh. on all of the all of the white notes yeah. so let's change it a little bit to something that we might not be able to know quite so easily so here i'm going to go to e you can see that they flip around a little bit and then i can choose any so lydian augmented um, see that's really good for me because i don't play any instruments and i do, yeah. do it by ear so that's perfect and this is you know me, me too like i i play guitar but i learned by shapes like yeah. like many many guitarists so um, it wasn't I did I didn't have that like harmony in the way I had chords that I knew and I knew what sounded good together but um, I didn't really have it sort of like as methodical as as a, as a piano roll yeah yeah um, so then you can just start let me just do normal Lydian anyway I don't know why I'm getting um, extra All right so let's <laughs> do this so Lydian it's a bit like a major scale but it's got a um, augmented fourth I believe it doesn't matter why, why did I share that but um, so it's a little bit like it's a little bit major. It's a bit jazzy, right? Um, and so I'm just going to find the root note because I'm in E. I, I'll just choose the first E. But you can do anything you want, really, because as long as you hit one of these blue, blue notes. notes, you're fine. So what I'm going to do is let's just I'm just going to duplicate this. And uh... okay, so let's actually put this so we take up the whole bar and then I'll duplicate the bar to okay. duplicate really easily just go to this top loop brace and I'm gonna press command and D command and D let's do eight so now we can start building some harmony quite quite easily so let's um I'm gonna highlight everything command and a and then press shift and up just so it starts on e3 and so then I'm just going to make a pattern mm -hmm. like this. So one down there. And it's going to just, they're all going to sound lovely and in, in key. And then let's have another one there. Um, and then maybe start coming back up. So we'll leave those with, let's make these longer. All right. So this is a little progression in E Lydian. And you could just do that straight off the bat. So then um, let's command an A. And then I'm going to just hold down option. And that's your, your universal copy. Um, and I'm going to add some harmony. So. In this case, and you don't need to know this, you can just you can just trial and error. Yeah. But if I count like one, two, three, so this is the first one, then that one's the second one. If I count three down, that means I've harmonized it. You'll know that that's like a third as a singer. We'll be able to hear that. So you can hear. Ah, and you hear that one that was off. Yeah. We're writing it's a horror score. Blue it's not on the blue note. What was I thinking? So then I'm going to go to the next blue one there. And then as long as we're on the blue notes, I'm just going to check everything. Then job's good. In. Up, up. Up, up. Up. I'm going to put that one down one more. But actually what I'll do is I'm going to make sure that these all, let's... Uh, Put them down. I'm going to put them all down an octave. So shift and down, just like I shifted and up. Um, I'm going to fix that note that was off and maybe just put this one down. So we're going down a little bit more. And then these, I'm going to just let them go their own way. So that's a really easy way to start getting some 
um, yeah, getting some harmony in, and it's just it's just super easy. And then you can fold it, and then these are only the notes that we've played. So maybe that one doesn't work quite so well. So you could move that up there as well. So that's scale. Scales. Scales awesome. I love it. If I'm starting a track and I want to, I've done that. What you've just mm. done, and then I want to add something else in. Mm -hmm. Do I? Can I just copy that? Take the notes out, like, or change the instrument of, so that I yeah. get the same notes but a different instrument. All right. Yeah. So let's go to. What I'm going to do is just open another MIDI track like yeah. this. I've got a drum rack that's automatically signed, but let me just delete that. So I've got a new MIDI track. Let's go back in and let's get the synth that I used. Oh no, I did it on the wrong one. And then we can go down to maybe get a key. All right. So we've got this, this nice, these nice little see what this sounds like right so sometimes a really nice way of generating melody especially when you've got because this is like the foundation already yeah. so especially now we've got this harmony um, i'm going to just alt drag across so okay we could we could keep that there for like a, dram a dramatic aside but <laughs> actually you might want to just um start creating depending on what genre of music you're making but you can start creating a little rhythm on each of these um so maybe let's go in i often just keep my my grid on 1 16th just because that that's the way i work i think i, I kind of understand these little sort of four per square yeah. and i work within those a lot uh, so I'm just going to copy and drag them over and see what happens. So we have a like, little triplet thing. Okay, you get you get the gist. I see what you're doing. And then you could so you could like copy these over. I've already forgotten which ones they've deleted. <laughs> uh, or we could just do it again. This is this is the beauty of it though. This is why I love these sessions. Because they never go 100% right, like life. Um, and that, so yeah, so you can, you can get, kind of get the gist. I feel like I need to just finish it for completion. Yeah, okay. Maybe you, you can do some beatboxing to get us all. Um... Yeah. Thank you. Totally inspiring. Really uh, so Somebody needs to get you some tissue or yeah. something this is why, to wipe. This is why I do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> yeah. Don't swallow your tongue though. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna just make it a little bit shorter because we just we don't we don't have all day. So quick way to do that is just command an L and then you've got a little loop. <laughs> You can see you can you can, you can, you can, you can keep, keep working, working on all of these. So let's go to get this one here, um, and let's bring it back to let's just get a string. So I'm not having really to think of any other uh, any other notes. So this one you could effectively make a whole track out of the same instrument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this one, yeah. we'll just have as like a high too low. So deep, so deep. And that's a really nice trick just to have like the sustain on a pedal note they used to call it back in the day, but sustain on like the the root note that tonic mm -hmm. um and that could just go on through through the whole track and it'll sound really nice yeah um do you want me to show you the filter trick that i was yeah, discussing please. before mm, okay so we could yeah, probably yeah. do it uh let's do it on let's do it on this here all right 
So filter. Guys, if you guys are, are watching and you have any questions for Mel, please feel free to ask us if there's anything you wanted to go over or talk to you about. Specifically in Ableton, uh, she is the Don. It can be related or unrelated as well. You yeah, might... of course. Anything yeah. to do with today's events, um, please feel free to ask away. This is a safe space and it's your <laughs> opportunity to pick the brains of these amazing people. So take that opportunity. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to open like a sidechain track, call it sidechain. Yep. Um, and then what we'll do with this is let's just put a wavetable on. So for people who don't know what sidechain is, do you mind explaining a little bit? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, what we can do with uh, sidechaining is we can let, let me let me explain it in the context of this. Uh -huh. So this filter at the moment is just all the way down. We can't hear anything because I've just eliminated all of that sound, obviously. Open it back up, we've got some sound. What we can do with side chaining is we can root sound through the filter and we can get that sound or that signal to control it. So if it was my voice, it would go like this. Every time, okay, every time I speak that goes <laughs> up and down. Um, and so it's it's most most like most famously done with uh, compressors. So um, it, you could have a long sound, and when you compress, you um, when you can, you basically the side chain compresses and attenuates, turns down the volume um, of whatever track the compressor's on. Um, in this case, we're going to use it to open up the filter. Um, so it's kind of doing the opposite of side chain compression. So um, a lot of, not all, but a lot of devices within Ableton have a sidechain function. So um, always be curious. There's loads of little folders that you can open, loads of little panels. So that says sidechain. So what I wanna do is I wanna root some sound into this. So let's go to, this is gonna be my side sidechain trigger or source. So I'm gonna grab it needs to, I need to have some actual sound coming through. So I'm going to put a synth onto this. Um, and then, oh, look at this. And oh. it's remembered that I'm in Elydian, which is just wonderful. See, that's right, what but, I was going to ask earlier, when you open a new thing, so that you don't have to keep putting it back to the same note or scale. Mm, yeah. It just does it for you. It's dead clever, yeah. <sighs> it's just so <laughs> it's just too much we should probably tell Ableton just to pare it down just yeah. less, less good things please yeah, can you just stop being amazing <laughs> make it a bit harder for us yeah. um, and so here let's go with um, just something like this I actually want it to be playing on different notes than my thing here so actually a good thing that we can do i keep saying thing so <laughs> but what we can do so is because i want this to be playing not at the same time as this so if we also oh, in between press yeah so i what i used to do is go back and forward like this and go okay there's not one there like I no. dribble a bit but then what you can do is press shift and highlight both of the clips and now you can see it gives you this little overlay. Nope. So then I can decide where I want it. So I can move that and around. It in, oh, that's maybe, maybe I want them both to hit on the same first. We'll, we'll see. Um, and so let's see how that sounds. Okay. I think I'll do that instead. Um, and so this is the side chain. And so the side chain is going to be, remember, it's controlling this one here. So the side chain, I say side chain because that's easy. So press side chain, audio from side chain. Okay, bring the envelope over. Already it sounds like heavenly. Yeah, so 
that's something that we might have not been able to achieve with this really long sustained note. So you're, you're affecting a little bit of rhythm into this. And then, so the envelope is just how much this side chain is going to be influencing our filter. Let's turn the, the, the source up. And now hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to sit nicely with this other one. No, not you, not you. <coughs> you. So you can hear that they're dancing together rather than like fighting for the same space. This one's a little bit OTT. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a bit attention grabbing, isn't yeah. it? Like, Take your know. heels off. Huh? Take your heels off. <laughs> Get your flat. <laughs> uh, I've never heard that before. That's brilliant. I just made it up. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Genius. Genius. <laughs> Uh, so maybe I'm going to put, probably put less notes in the in the side chain. The thing is, it's immediately making me feel like I'm on the beach and I beef up. Oh, one day, only. one day that will happen again. Oh. Mm. Uh, so let's let's try that now. So this, so this is how much you can you can hear that how much the side chain is affecting. So we can just ramp that up a little bit, and then the this is a, like a little envelope. So we can change the shape. So with a longer release, the filter's open for longer. Shorter release, we can make it a little, little bit more percussive. And to give it context. So now my side chain, I don't want that. <laughs> so we're just gonna um, switch that off. And so that can just sit silently. That um, top end sound, mm. the, the continuous one, how would you go about doing that very quickly? Like processing it, like what, doing what? Yeah, if you want to add some reverb to just make that that long high end sound a bit more, uh, you a bit know. better, <laughs> <laughs> a bit better. Okay, less less in your face, should I say? <laughs> so there's a couple of things we can do. We can add some chorus to widen it up a little bit. Um, um, so at the moment it's very mono and it's just mm -hmm. in the middle of, middle of the stereo field, so our perceived middle, which just really means that it's coming out of each ear or each speaker at the same volume. Um, but what you can do with chorus <clears throat> is what, what chorus does is it, it detunes one of these very slightly. So, you know, we've got two signals coming out the same, different ears. So chorus will detune one slightly and that works like, if, you know, if you're in a choir mm. or me and you are singing, yeah. that's very different than you singing twice or me recording you twice if I record you and just put yourself over yourself you would just sound louder yeah um nice. you get a little bit more you get a little bit more like separation if you overdub yourself because there's all of these like different inflections of you singing right so you might sing a tiny a few cents like I'm trying not to say out of tune uh, <laughs> but you might be detuned slightly. As a human voice, you can't get it perfectly dead on every time. So yeah, yeah. Let's see, would which is great. Which is great because it, it it allows you to add this width. So if you imagine how that kind of works, this is what chorus is doing. It's slightly detuning one, so it feels like there's two in the room. So I'll show you. This is. I thought this was good enough, but apparently not. <laughs> So to make up a technique for this. I'm just uh, trying to, have to give more insight to the viewer. <laughs> How could you make it mm, better? <laughs> <All right>. Your words. <laughs> 
So here um, in this section, uh, it's really nicely arranged now in Live 11. So we've got um, we've got different categories. So I think this is really good when people are starting out because you know what, like you, no longer are you just looking at this massive list of, of, of devices that you've got to get through. We're going to yeah. go to pitch and modulation. And then in that we've got chorus ensemble and then we've got a bunch of presets. So I'm just going to switch chorus on and instantly Wow. Yeah. Because we're on Zoom, I've just realized it's going to be flattened to mono. So let's let's go and do some. You can definitely hear the difference already, though. Great. Yeah, I thought you were just going to put it on send, you see. Oh, yeah. So we could also send it to the reverb. So I've got a reverb here. Um, I could put the chorus on a send and send multiple things. Um, my second favorite, it's not really my second favorite, but Another favorite device is the Tal Chorus. So this is um, a free chorus that's um, modeled on the Juno choruses, really famous. So we can increase the stereo width through. Uh, that's just changing the volume. But yeah, so let's just send this to a little bit of reverb. The amount of reverb here um, on the send, uh, if it's not enough, then sometimes put it a reverb on as an insert. So let's let's throw the hybrid. This is a new reverb in Live Eleven. Ooh. So it's getting a little bit further away. You could also just take that top end down a little bit, just so it's a bit less harsh. Um, a nice thing to do after a reverb is add a little bit of saturation because it, it kind of crunches it up a little bit so you can um, or overdrive as well this is just like a distortion with without wow. so we can take the dry wet down if you don't know what you're doing with saturation these are your three most important knobs the drive so it's what you're driving into the unit um, and then the dry wet, the amount of dry and wet signal, and then the output. So you can just, if you, if you feed it in, see there, it says 12 D 12.6. Maybe you want to take it down 12.6 as well. So you're not actually turning it up. You're just adding distortion. So you can hear the difference without it, like just sounding louder and better. And maybe I put the sausage fat nut on my drums to show you what <laughs> I was talking about before. <laughs> uh, there you go. Just the best interface as well that has never changed. I've seen that. Of course it's you wicked. have. It's everywhere. It's wicked. So it actually adds. You face it, doesn't it? Say what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just so we can give it a little bit of colour. Turn that down. There you go. So yeah, yeah this is great. great. Really, really cheap. cheap. Um, and I use it all the time. <laughs> That's so good. So Steve Mortimer's just um, put a comment. Hi, Steve. Thank you for joining us. He said, it's, it's more of a comment than a question. I love how you both picked up on how often there's parts-based model adopted approach, especially by men, rather than a whole approach. I like Mel's analogy of looking under the hood too much rather than just driving the car. I often feel we tend to concentrate on the style rather than the content. And that leads us more into technique rather than the holistic approach just thoughts mm. i agree 100 percent. you know we have to just focus on the fun part of it i still do it i still kind of when i'm trying to make a track i automatically start doing mixing as i'm going and it's an awful habit because you get lost and then it gets ruined 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, re I remember playing a friend of mine. Uh, it was, when was it? It was probably about 10 years, 11 years ago. It was, I was still in Manchester. And um, I played him a song and I'd been working. I'd been working on the kick a long time. Yeah. Like the kick was like, yeah. I played him this song and he just went. <laughs> Is that it? Because <laughs> there was there was just like it wasn't very interesting. There was nothing happened. But the kick. The kick was amazing. <laughs> Pen kick. It was brilliant. Yeah. So, so like, oh man, Tassos, Tasuli, if you uh, if you're watching, I don't think you are. But <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah That's so i can i agree again yeah um i've got a question here from eris um does the sausage fat now use upward compression yeah it, it must do because it makes things louder i think i don't know what it uses because i can't get inside but i think it's kind of it's like uh, another great plugin which is similar and i think just as overused is uh the OTT. Oh, that's the one that I was trying to ask you. Do you remember you said it? And I had to mm. mess go, now what's that thing? I think I said, I think it was the OTT. It was the OTT. You and the OTT does, yeah, it uses upward, that's the upward and downward compression. Um, so it's actually making the quieter sounds louder, right? Um, but it's also attenuating the the louder sound. So, so you can push the whole thing up really like, making and actually this this was a great question because i think that's why it's called a sausage because when you have a waveform that's really dynamic and you use downward compression and then turn the whole thing up it starts stops looking like a dynamic waveform and starts to look like a sausage and that's why you don't want too much compression because you want the dynamic range you want the difference between really quiet sounds and really loud sounds because that's what's interesting mm -hmm. um so yeah, I, I think I would guess that it probably does that. Um, and yeah, and so this is what this is doing here. And you, you can hear the difference if we've got this upward compression on each of the frequency bands and this downward compression. And then you can actually hear that it's making everything a lot quieter. But you can, all, you can hear the little artifacts, the little sounds a bit like a good beatbox and um, they're being brought to the brought to the front um but what you can do is do things like turn the volume up i really just use these knobs getting a bit louder and then bring the amount down so just i use the, just a, a little bit of ott without present loads of little sort of changes are, are better than big broad strokes i have the tendency sometimes to overdo my compression um mm. and it's probably because i don't have a great monitoring system um mm. so yeah and and a lot of people don't realize that that compression does make things quiet <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what's really good, um, but it you know it's pricey, not pricey, but it's just another subscription. Is the is it Sound Gym? And I started mm -hmm. like because they've got. Um, I wanted to be better at like identifying like frequencies, yeah. you know, and I think because it helps with like things that sound a bit muddy. If you can really hone in, like it, oh, that's three hundred hertz or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they, they, they've got a nice little program in it that's about uh, knowing if something's over or under compressed. Um, so it might be interesting for you to um, have a look at. Yeah. And then just do it like a couple of times. Maybe even yeah. just look it's, at mine. I'm, I, do, I do get a bit lazy when it comes to stuff like that because I'm constantly battling this whole, yeah. you know, be creative and then, you know, trying to make everything sound like it's a finished product, even though I've just started it. Still really bad habit that I'm trying to get yeah. out. Um, but obviously by doing all of this stuff, I don't really get a lot of time to do the creative part. 
So um, I'm going to focus on that a lot more. Uh, we have another question. Um, do you prefer to ride gain or use compression? Uh, compression. I, I never really ride gain. Not because it's wrong, but like it's just it's never been something that I've done. Um, I've, I've not really had any studio. I've never I didn't come up in studios or um, I studied popular music and recording, but I didn't like being in the studio. That's another story. But really? yeah, so why is that? Do you mind if I ask? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was because the first the first day I went in, the tutor was a bit of a knob, and I went. He was like, "Check." Um, I think we were meant to read a handout beforehand. I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> he said, and "Like, see if you can." Uh, do this thing. I think he showed us and then we had to copy and I went over and just started like pressing faders and pressing the aux button and and he was just really, he was like, no, why, why are you touching everything? It was like massively dicky and um, and so I just didn't, I hated going in the studio. Um, that, I hated. So relevant to, to what I know, yeah. today and the way that male behavior in the studio affects i thought about that this morning actually when i was thinking about you know what i'd done um kind of like what my path was i was just reminding myself yeah and i was like oh my god yeah and you know what happened there is that i then didn't because it's you know it was modular so i didn't i just didn't take recording i did everything uh like just in the box so i chose arranging i chose i did composition I chose the essay. Um, we had to be in an ensemble, but and that was fine. But yeah, I just and actually looking back, I would have, I'd have loved to be able to, like, like, like now to be able to own like a big recording desk. And I, you know, I know my way a little bit around, but definitely, That's really I'm annoying not. Me that has. Yeah, yeah, but you know, he was he. You know, when somebody is such a dick that you're just kind of like, oh, you've actually got problems. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's it's exactly that. You know, when someone is so uh, protective of their environment, and you know, has that awful attitude of anyone, I'm better than everyone in here, and you need to respect me because of my insecurities. Yeah. Uh, why does that give someone the right to effectively change someone's life choices? Mm. Yeah. You know, but you know, but he was he was big in that moment, and he, he was definitely the boss of that dusty little studio, and he might still be there. Who knows? But yeah, it was it it definitely you could see. Yeah, you're right. It definitely just just changes your course because. And that's like that's you, awful. So you know, you could have had a completely different path had that person in that studio been a woman who encouraged you, yeah. or another man who was more encouraging um, and you could have had a different journey. I mean, obviously, we, you know, you're, you're where you are now, which is amazing, but it's things like that, you know, that I get very angry about, you know, what gives another human being the right to affect someone else's life in such a dramatic way, you know, mm -hmm. that, that they start making different choices based on your behavior. Um, so I'm sorry about that. No, that is all right. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure. I'm <laughs> now I'm sure he wouldn't be able to get away with that behavior now like um you know but like even and that goes to show like how much has changed because yeah. like then it for me it was like yeah I did feel shit at the moment I also I didn't think for a second that that would be that, that would be something that I discussed with anyone within the university yeah. but I think even now at least there'd be it'd be taken seriously if you if you took that to somebody not saying that everybody would feel comfortable taking that to somebody but you know that that, that infrastructure is starting to be in place yeah 100 percent um eris is just saying that for live music she gets it all the time um people saying that she can't do this or that without knowing what the sound mm. is. um so yeah it's this is something that we have to definitely change. Um, I've seen that with DJs, um, Eris, oh, where, yeah. you know, like, because, you know, you can be a great DJ, 
in your room you can be a great dj and i've seen it where girls have been and women have been in a club and it comes to change over or set up so you're looking a bit puzzled because you've not you've not come across this system before yeah. and there's you've not got any tech and you you've got to work this out and all systems change and like i yeah there's there's been people that i've been with over the years not recently but like i remember a dude in my group that was like don't don't dj if you don't know how to you don't know how to like work the stuff so all right you step up mate <laughs> but it's just and that's like it's so common but and, and also you know that that is the perception so it yeah. makes you hotter it makes you more likely to make a mistake it makes me mute and like <laughs> i just stop functioning i know what you mean you're already put in that position of like having to prove yourself Mm. Again, you know, and rather than coming from a place of chill and calm and let's have some fun, <clears throat> you know, which is what a guy would do. Um, you're right. They put you in that really awful space um, of, of like, oh, and you're bound to do something um, wrong. Do you know what I mean? Um, the, uh, Steve um, Mortimer, who, who I don't know if he's still watching, but he asked a question earlier. Um, he is amazing. He supported my campaign, but he said a similar thing about um, male DJs um, trying to own the DJ space. And it's like, like you've got to stop that behavior. You know, there are some fantastic de female DJs out there mm -hmm. now. Like just smashing it, just move over. Yeah. Literally move over and let them do their job. Do you know and you I mean? don't have to comment about like you know, how they should be and behave like, yeah, sure and this is and you know i'm sure they know how to mix yeah it's a very it's a very annoying space though because there seems to be this like with um women djs at the moment there's like there's yeah there's this big like insurgence resurgence of or just yeah there's a lot of um female djs <laughs> but a lot of them are gorgeous and and that's and that's because of the culture um i'm not disputing that their talent but i think there's there's also there should be a time when people step back from attacking them so oh like you know x has a ghostwriter but also so do most of the guys yeah lots of people have ghostwriters but the people would definitely definitely sort of sit there and be really happy to sort of peck them down and and and, and i think yeah okay there's a little bit of it's a bit of like a distorted version of like how female musicians look around the world and they're not all models but actually you've that's also not their fault yeah. they're just a product and so there's there's just like a little bit of compassion and that needs to happen at this stage when which is quite a transformative stage but I think it's I, it's I not there yet is it in, in, the, in the panel I was on earlier as well like we don't look at guys and be like, oh, no, nah, man, he's got a beard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or he's only got a moustache. What? what? Yeah. Why is he dancing? Yeah. Why is he dancing? Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. dancing he's techno. Useless. He's only got a moustache. Does he know how to move the knob? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do we say that? Oh, my God, he's got his hair in a side party. Oh. <laughs> That's an amazing comedy sketch. <laughs> <laughs> like, that means he cannot DJ. Like, no way. You know what I mean? It's appalling that when it comes to women, it's just commonplace to look at her looks, what she's wearing, and women mm. that are that choose to to wear makeup and look good, whether they're DJs or not, are perceived as as less uh, intelligent. Yeah, you've got to kind of like defeminize yourself in order yeah, to, to be thing. taken seriously. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that we will hopefully discuss at some point today is the fact that women in the studio environment sometimes feel that they have to act like men to fit in that environment. So they take on this extra persona of like, mm. um, when they shouldn't have to. And, and, you know, it's something that we should address, you know, because all of the guys that have supported my campaign, I have so much respect for them. And I can see them in a much, a, a completely different light as men because they are supportive, because they're open, mm -hmm. because they want to help change. Um, 
I respect them so much more. And they're not they're not kind of having that pack mentality. They're they're happy to say how they feel and and educate other men. Um, and women, it's not just men that need educating. Some women need, need educating too. Some yeah. women don't like the fact that you know women are, are up there doing their thing. You know, so it, it goes both ways, and which brings me back to it being a society thing. And and um, Eris is saying here that you know ninety nine percent of it at the time it's usually their insecurities that cause them to act like that, which I agree with. So Mel, can you just before everyone goes, let let everyone know where they can find you, how they can um, get in touch. Yeah, meluyeparker.com. So it's just uh, my name there and then .com, no hyphen. Um, it's a one word. So yeah, just, um, yeah, you can take a look at what I'm doing uh, musically and also where I'm teaching, which I'm re being reminded, as I say this, to update my website. But yeah, you can catch yeah. Mel at Point Blank as well. Um, yeah. And where's the other place? Uh, so I've just come back from teaching at Berkeley, so I'm oh, yeah, not doing... Perfect both of those at the same time yeah. say what i said of course how could i forget <laughs> but, oh, yeah. brilliant um okay so guys i'd like to thank you all so much and mel thank you so much for your time and for beatboxing with me pleasure, um, pleasure. <laughs> thank you for kicking off this amazing um unheard day for international women's day and uh, guys, the next interview we're going to be having is with the amazing Manon Grandji. Uh, I'll be asking her some questions about her journey and um, we'll also be having some other people come on board to ask her some questions directly. So please make sure you come back and join us at around 4.30. And yeah, any other questions you have that you can't think of now and you want to ask Mel, just send them through to me and I'll send them across to her and you guys can get in touch. But Thank you so much and thank you all for watching and we'll see you again at 4.30.